our group have decided to look into the operations of Warwick University Nursery, suited on campus beside lakeside residences. For our project, we have considered the four V's framework, the input-output processes, and the five performance objectives, and supported our research with an interview-style meeting with manager Debbie Castle. The four V's framework analyzes the differentiation in different operations according to whether they can be considered high or low for volume, variety, variation in demand, and visibility. Volume refers to essentially the number of customers and therefore scale of the operations. Variety refers to the variety and flexibility of the service offered to the customer. Variation in demand focuses on a company's ability and necessity to handle fluctuations in the demand for the product or service. Finally, visibility refers to the extent that the customer can view the operation process. The differentiation in these four criteria has implications for many other areas of the company, such as costs and flexibility. For the nursery, volume is low to moderate. The nursery's numbers are limited as it only allows children of the students and staff of the university. However, the nursery still has 129 children on register, a figure which is good for a nursery. The variety of service offered to the customers is very high. The nursery is flexible around attendance hours with both morning and afternoon sessions and provides a tailored service to each child. The nursery staff are very flexible and observe and assess each child before catering for their individual needs. The variation in demand for the nursery is very low. Despite the university term breaks and the flexibility in sessions available, there is very little seasonal fluctuation. There is a slightly quieter period in autumn with usually four or five children less than the normal demand. However, this is predictable and a very small change, so has little effect on the nursery. Finally, the visibility for the nursery is very high. Parents usually view the first 5 to 10 minutes and last 5 minutes of every day, however, are allowed to stay for any length of time if they want to. Additionally, each child has a learning journal which is regularly updated by the nursery staff with photographs and activities. This is then shown to the parent. The input transformation output model illustrates the basic process of all operations for both services and products. The input is made up of the resources that are to be transformed, such as materials, information, and customers, and the transforming resources which aid the process, such as facilities and staff. The transformation phase is where these transforming and transformed resources are combined to create the output, which is the actual product or service. In the case of the nursery, the children are the input. As the children are being stored or accommodated, they have in effect their physical property. But a nursery also affects the psychological state of the children. Thus, the children are the transformed resources. The staff and the equipment or materials at the nursery are the transforming resources. The staff care for the children and facilitate orderly conduct and their use of educational resources and materials, while the educational materials themselves provide information and knowledge to them. The output is information and the free time given to the parent. The children gain knowledge during their time in the nursery, thus showing that a transfer of information has taken place, while children themselves are also affected by this and thus become the output. By understanding this process and what they want to achieve, the nursery can improve and continually evolve their service. The five operations performance objectives, quality, speed, dependability, flexibility, and cost, are all important to every operation. However, it can be difficult to achieve them all simultaneously, and so different operations will prioritize different objectives depending on what is most relevant to the service or product that is being created. The first objective, quality, includes both quality conformance and quality specification. Improved quality reduces waste and therefore costs, increases dependability and customer satisfaction, potentially allowing them to charge price premium and increase margins. Speed can also be considered very relevant to most operations as a faster operation can reduce inventories 
and also risks caused by variation in demand. Increased dependability can save both time and money, and also create stability for the company and good customer loyalty. Flexibility refers to flexibility in delivery, volume, and mix, as well as flexibility in the actual product or service, and can be considered beneficial in terms of dealing with demand as well as catering to different customer requirements. Finally, reducing cost is also fundamental for many companies as it directly impacts competition and profit. Cost is also largely influenced by the other four performance objectives. For Warwick University Nursery, the most important objective is the quality of the service they offer. The manager, Debbie, emphasized this to us, highlighting how quality would not be compromised for another objective. The nursery offers premium services, including high-quality meals produced by a professional chef and other high-qualified staff who are trained to respond quickly to numerous situations, from child illness to crucial security issues. Additionally, following a research project called EPPE, the nursery ensures the quality of the staff bypasses the need to minimize cost, as the study emphasizes the need for better quality graduate staff. Furthermore, the nursery is intentionally located in a natural environment to encourage child development and provides relevant, clear, and reassuring information on their website. Due to the type of service a nursery provides, speed is arguably one of the least important and most irrelevant objectives. It is difficult to improve speed due to the meticulous application process and long feedback. The nursery prefers to take their time focusing on each child's personal development. According to the nursery website, each child has their own key person who aids this process, and with 28 members of staff who interact with the children, there is no need to rush operations. The dependability objective is high for the nursery. Due to the requirements of the customers, they cannot afford to be unreliable. For example, opening late would directly impact the customers who are studying or working at the university at set scheduled times and are entirely dependent on the nursery for the care of their children. A strict schedule is also crucial for the nursery, as the children require a secure and stable environment, and therefore there must be effective coordination between the numerous members of staff. Flexibility is also important for the nursery. The staff must be able to adapt to each individual child's needs, as children enroll at any stage from three months to five years and develop at different rates. Meals are also flexible to conform to individual dietary needs. There is also a large range of different available sessions, including morning, afternoon, and holiday services, as well as different length contracts, to increase the convenience of the childcare for the customers. Minimizing cost is a relatively unimportant objective for the nursery as it does not need to compete by price due to the significant location and tax advantages whereby the university staff can get some tax wares as well as several financial support systems available. According to manager Debbie, the biggest outgoing cost is easily salary yet. Although it would be possible to minimize this cost, the nursery would prefer to ensure a higher quality of staff. Therefore, minimizing cost is not a priority. This polar diagram shows how the nursery are able to balance and prioritize their performance objectives with quality, flexibility, and dependability being most important and speed and cost less important. This research has demonstrated to us the complexities involved with balancing priorities in any operation. As shown by the three models we applied, the nursery appears to well understand its own potential and what is most relevant and important for operations. This is supported by the good profits and excellent offset reports received over the last two years. Regarding recommendations for the future, we would advise considering a second on-campus site, as with 78 places and 129 children on register, and there is clearly a growing market demand. Additionally, we would advise partnering with PhD students in education by offering work experience placements to further expand operations. This could contribute fresh and unique perspectives for child development at a comparatively lower wage.